God help me for this. ISO stands for Instrument Shaped Object. It is a term used by band instrument repair technicians to refer to instruments of exceedingly cheap and poor quality. And I'm pretty sure that I have one right here in this box. So before I jump into the actual unboxing of this uh, E-flat clarinet, there are a couple of things that I want to say. First is that I bought this clarinet myself. Um, so for I, I think it came in for right around $130. I paid for it. I have no affiliation with the company that uh, that sells this thing. So whatever I say, whatever I find is my actual opinion. Second is that I've watched a lot of videos on the topic of cheap instruments of this kind. And something that I have not seen talked about in any of them is the fact that even if the instrument plays well out of the box, or let's say in some cases the instrument needs a lot of work out of the box in order to play well, um, you will occasionally run into situations and perhaps even often run into situations where if you bring one of these instruments into a repair shop, they might refuse to work on it. And uh, I've worked in repair shops of both kinds. Uh, I've worked in repair shops where the line that we've used is that we cannot get parts for instruments of this kind. Um, and in some cases that's true, in some cases it's not so true, um, but the real reason that shops will often refuse to work on these is that the metal is of such a low quality that any adjustments that are done will inevitably go out with just normal use and the instrument will keep coming back and keep coming back and it will make the repair technician look like they don't know what they're doing even if they do. Um, so, you know, for instance, you bring it in and replace two pads and a week later four other pads fall out that weren't replaced by the technician but that were in there with the original factory glue that was so poor that the pads just let go. Um, something like that can happen. Be aware of that. If you consider buying one of these instruments, you might bring it in somewhere and they might just say, we're not going to work on this. Okay, so without further ado, let me unbox this thing. Pretty cute case. I mean, you know, for 130 bucks, including shipping, a lot of plastic. Nice swab. Barrel is barrel shaped. Rings are on there nice and tight. Bell ring. Let me see. Bell ring is on there good. This is really exciting. There's a reed on this mouthpiece. I do have my mouthpiece, but I think I'm going to try it with uh, their mouthpiece first. And I might even use their reed. Tenon corks don't look too bad. Okay, some corks in here to, well, little foam wedges in here to keep some keys closed during shipping. Already there's a stuck ring. Oh, no, wait. Ah, oh, no. Just another cork. Okay, this does not feel too bad. Uh, let's get an overhead and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so now we're here at the bench. This is a really scientific test. I mean, the quality of the plastic, honestly, not that bad compared to things that I've seen. Like the tenon cuts are maybe a little sloppy. There's some kind of some crap in there that you can sort of see. It's like it's not super perfectly clean. But you know, like the keys don't feel that bad. There's not a lot of slop. There's a normal amount of movement between posts. Things don't feel super loose and clicky. The plating looks pretty nice. There's nothing about the pads that 
looks bothersome to me. Like, they're put in there okay. I'm not seeing a bunch of excess glue. Spring tensions generally feel fairly even. Tenon corks are not bad, as I said before. So, like, first impressions without playing it are pretty good. Let's have a look at the mouthpiece. Ligature definitely has, like, a cheap feel. Like, the way it was cut out of the die is kind of rough. But man, the mouthpiece is not bad! You know, I'm not measuring this or anything, I'm just looking at it, but... You know, the rails look pretty good. Pretty impressive. The reed is probably going to be garbage. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. I don't know if that's coming up on camera, but there's definitely some questionable uh, organism in this cane. But I'll probably play it anyway. All right, now here's the part we've all been waiting for, myself included. All I've done is greased up the corks. This is still the reed that came with it. Doesn't look that great. Just like the shot up my nose that you just probably had. Doesn't look that great. This doesn't look that great. But it's not going to kill me. Corks are nice and tight. Not a lot of wobble. Okay, here we go. But first, I just want to say that I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. I like making this kind of stuff and I want to do more of it, so please help me grow the channel. Consider subscribing, leaving a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's it. Let's give this a shot. You know, for what it is, especially with the mouthpiece and the reed, it's not bad. The, uh, the B regulation is, seems to be dead on the money. I'm playing that with really light pressure in my pinky. See one and one. So one and one maybe could be adjusted a little bit. the ring height on the thumb a little bit. It's too flush right now so the first pad on my left hand is not closing quite right. But that's minor. It's a minor adjustment. Let's try another famous one. God help me for this.
look, I mean, for what it is, it's working well. I mean, and especially considering, again, that I'm using the mouthpiece and the reed that came with it. You know, if you souped this up a little bit with, like, my setup or any aftermarket mouthpiece and reputable reed, I think you got a playing horn here. That spring tension on the A, or, no, it's actually the A flat, is a little too strong for me. I would like to probably loosen that up, um, or lighten that up, I should say. Let's try another one. And you can tell, like, that's where the uh, the thumb ring uh, regulation thing really comes into play is on that high C. I have to really press extra hard on the thumb to make it work, which is not always there right away. But let me try till one more time. Again, like for the millionth time, the read is garbage. Um, so it sounds a little trashy. But, hey, for $150 or so, you got an E-flat clarinet that seems like it's going to work. And, you know, like from the technician's point of view, I don't think these keys bend too easily. Like I was talking about, uh, it seems like they're all right. And the padding job from the factory is not that bad. And the other thing that can be a problem with these that I'm seeing right now is that the chimneys, so like where each individual finger goes, the raised part that, that uh, is raised to sort of meet the ring on your first finger, second finger, and then one, two, three on your right hand, um, those chimneys are inserts, which is not uncommon even in really high-end professional clarinets to have inserts there, but on these lower quality, cheaper instruments, sometimes those chimneys are glued in with some kind of epoxy or super glue or shellac I've even seen in some cases, uh, that lets go over time and then you have a leaking post or a leaking chimney or worse you have a chimney that falls off um, and I've encountered that a few times that's not an impossible thing to fix um, but it is one of those things where if you brought it in to certain shops they would go well we're not gonna do this so uh, that's something to be aware of with these it could also cause frustration to a technician that might be working on this and going it's leaking but uh, the pads all seem to be seating fine, so I don't know where the leak is coming from. If you're in that situation and you're a technician, look at the, look into the chimneys leaking, um, and consider you know carefully removing them and re-gluing them. Again, not that hard to do, but um, something that is easily missed in many cases, I think. What else is there to do with this? Let me put a tuner on and see what that looks like. I'm not going to put the tuner up on the screen, but I think you can hear when I'm adjusting and when it's pretty stable from the drop.
overall the tendency is flat uh, for this instrument with this mouthpiece and reed. That I think could be improved with a better mouthpiece, a better reed, possibly a shorter barrel. It could be that I haven't played this enough to warm it up yet. Um, that would also help the pitch to uh, come up a little bit. It's overall like not in a range that is uh, unmanageable or uncorrectable by something that you could do as a player. Like it's not too far off. I could make this work. Um, especially if I modified the equipment slightly, as I've mentioned, ad nauseum already. <sighs> so something else that I'm going to emphasize when it comes to this instrument is uh, just because the one that I happened to get works pretty well out of the box, does not mean that the one that you uh, potentially would get out of the box would work just as well. In other words, I can't speak for the factory quality control in any case, especially not this one. I've seen big name uh, instruments come out of the factory, come out of the case brand new uh, with major problems. So that's certainly is something that could happen in, in this instance with uh, an instrument of this cost. Now look, is this an instrument that I'm going to want to use on a professional level? Probably not. But uh, if you are a doubler or a student just looking to get into E-flat clarinet, um, somebody that's on a budget that needs to build up your arsenal of horns for whatever reason, this is a pretty good bet. I mean, it's it's just as good as, like, I don't know, a, a plastic Bundy E-flat clarinet will probably set you back six, seven hundred dollars somewhere in that range. Uh, a used wooden E-flat clarinet is going to be even more, maybe twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars something like that. Um, and for the difference in price, I don't I don't see an enormous difference in quality um, for the instruments of that kind that I've, I've played. This is not a bad bet. There are a, a ton of sellers on eBay and Amazon that are selling probably this exact same instrument, just under different names. This has no brand name on it, on the case, on the instrument, on any of the packaging. This is a generic thing that they make. Uh, that gets sold by countless resellers. So I'll leave a link to what I bought and uh, a link to instruments that look to be of the exact same make. Um, but odds are if you just type in E-flat clarinet and sort by cheapest on eBay or Amazon, you're going to wind up with pretty much the same thing that I got here. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful, informative, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and uh, I hope you subscribe and look forward to future videos. Thanks for watching, and happy playing. Uh -huh.